Hello and welcome to another episode of Dustin's Grit. Um, today I want to show you how to draw a mummy. I thought it would be something different than what we've done before on this channel. So, first thing whoop, we're going to do, just like on the other how-to videos, we're going to start with uh, doing a little bit of sketching, using some basic shapes. So this will act as his head. I've got kind of a rectangular shape here. And if you want, this is a good point to go ahead and divide it up um, for his features. So we know this is going to be about the eye line. And then this will be down the middle to split that in half. And this is a mummy, so we're going to give him some kind of hunched over, awkward posture. because he's probably got a pretty stiff neck after being in a sarcophagus for hundreds of years. And so we're just kind of, I just like sketching around with the basic shapes at this stage to kind of feel the character out and not always sure where I'm going until I see the lines on the screen. So I just encourage you to sort of try that for yourself and figure out what works best for you. Um, if you wanted to break this down into further shapes, I would say you could do your circles for the shoulders here. And you can even just start with almost like a stick figure for the uh, appendages. And so really, on top of that stick figure for like this arm, you would just be adding kind of a cylinder type shape. And people um, struggle a lot with hands, which it's, there's a lot of components in, in a hand, but if you break it down into basic shapes, it's not as bad. So for me, I like kind of this uh, square shape and then for the thumb, you can kind of do it with a uh, just a 90 degree angle because you just have that one bend in your thumb. And then the other digits, if the mummy has all of his digits, you've got uh, a couple of extra spots for those fingers to bend. So I usually just start with the end and then add the segments of the finger one at a time. And again, this is just the rough sketch phase, so you're free to kind of just uh, make some mistakes and figure some things out as you're drawing. Um, for instance, like looking at this now, I can tell his, his noggin's too big. So what I would do is, since I'm working digitally, I can just manipulate it. like this. And so how I did that, I just go to the lasso tool and select the area I want to manipulate. And then there's a, uh, you could do the scale up, down, rotate tool if you wanted to, but you can't really adjust um, freely. So I like to go to edit, transform, and free transform. And what that will allow you to do, you can pull on any corner and change it that way. So I'm not going to apply that. But if you did the, the other tool, it keeps it constrained. So you, you don't have as much freedom. Okay, so we got a pretty good start here. It's giving him some, some mummies. So I know he's kind of wasting away here. He's gonna have, it's basically a skeleton, you know, so I kind of draw that with keeping that in mind. Um, so he's got some 
This light can be sort of coming out at you. And then maybe this one's sort of fading into the background here. And I think looking at it now, just um, again, because we're just sketching and figuring things out here on our own, I can already tell I want to do something a little bit different than what I have, which is, I feel like it'd be kind of cool to add a wall right here. And uh, maybe he's kind of steadying himself against the wall. So I'm going to add a suggestion that his hand is over here. And this would come down a little bit like that. And then we can just erase if you're doing this traditionally or you're just select it and hit delete and take that out. And I'm just kind of figuring out the rough shape of the wall that we're going to have over here. And being in the temple, it's going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to go ahead and I know in my mind, I'm kind of doing this just to show you how I'm thinking. But in my mind, I know that this area where these X's are going is going to be uh, blacked out. So we have the basic shape of our, our figure here. And again, I'm um, kind of just adding some lines to show you. I sort of skip this stage when I'm drawing um, just because I know how the structures are built. But if you're just starting out, sometimes it's helpful to have these sort of lines like this. But, and that gives you a guideline to build your shapes up around. So like, you know, when you're flushing out this leg, it's gonna just be a larger shape over top of the line that you already have right here. And no, we're gonna have lots of bandages and whatnot hanging off of him. I still feel like his face needs to be a little thinner. He hasn't had any pizza in a while. And maybe he's coming up a staircase. And this leg's going to be kind of the cool thing about like drawing zombies and mummies and creatures and stuff is you can do some stuff with the anatomy that you wouldn't normally see. And it's okay. If you saw somebody walking like this, you would uh, probably wonder if they got to go pee. Um... But this is perfectly natural posture for a mummy, as we all know. And maybe there's a torch back here adding some light. I don't know who left the light on, but it helps our drawing. So we're going to put it in there. Okay, so I, th I think we have a pretty good um, rough sketch to go on. I'm going to add just a few more place markers so I know where I'm going. And so if you're uh, sketching traditionally, hopefully you kept your lines light so you can work back over top of it and refine that and erase the ones you don't want. Uh, but in our instance, because we're working digitally, we're just going to drop the opacity back on this layer um, like 30 something percent, had a new layer on top. And then I like to come in with the pin tool that I've adjusted um, to an angle that I like and the thickness that I like. Um, I'll show you my settings. Hold on. I don't mess with this too often because I have everything the way I like it. So, um, but you can manipulate it in different ways. Um, if you go here to this wrench in the Clip Art Studio Pro, and you can manipulate all these different elements of it. And it 
will change the you can change the direction of your um, pin the density etc so I just recommend playing around with that stuff and seeing what uh, what you like what works for you and so now we're going to start uh, inking our mummy up here and I already know he's going to have some bandages kind of all over the place so maybe you only see part of this eye and then this full one and I don't really like the way this is looking so I'm just going to back it up And so at this point, I mean, depending on your style, you could make it um, cartoony or more realistic and gruesome. Thinking I'm feeling a little more cartoony today, so we won't be going too gruesome. So I like to have a little bit tighter lines when I'm working. Uh, more cartoony and if I'm going more realistic then I will keep it a little more loose that being said this guy's not so cartoony that he would be in a uh, Looney Tunes cartoon. It's more of a, a comic book style cartoony. And really, this is kind of just the same process that I've outlined in the other videos, um, which if you want to go back and check that out, this is the third how to draw video. We do a lot of time lapse videos, which are still um, a good teaching tool, and you can see how the drawings develop, uh, my process, how I work through it. Um, but this is the third in the series of uh, me actually narrating it and kind of explaining the process a little bit more, what I use, how I use it. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions or comments, um, any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to answer it. But basically, I'm just going to go through it and I know kind of the details I want to add. He's going to have a little bit of musculature still left, a little bit of preserved um, I don't want to say flesh, a little bit preserved uh, body parts, I don't know, but uh, mostly I'm going to have him, <laughs> uh, mostly I'm going to have him kind of like a skeleton. So, that is my cat in the background. She would like me to quit drawing and throw her a puzzle right now.
Okay, so uh, when it comes to uh, adding the details in this one, sorry about that. My phone's going off here. I'm going to put that on vibrate. Okay. And then just keep refining your drawing and working in the details, different areas. Um, again, I'm going to kind of play off the lighting on this. So don't need a ton of detail in the background. Just enough for like the suggestion of what's there, I feel like. And uh, sometimes if you, you can add some elements and then come back and erase things out, uh, it gives it a pretty cool effect, which is to finish my thought from earlier up here, what I was wanting to do is kind of, I'll just come in and add the shadow for what's there. Um, kind of the suggestion of his bone structure. And that's the kind of the cool thing about working digitally is you can come in and do this sort of stuff and then come back and erase over top of that and add uh, details in a way that it, it's going to give it a different look and I think it's a little more interesting than if you just drew it. And you can just kind of work to drape in some of the uh, bandages wherever you want. Um, maybe they're a little torn. And again, you can kind of come in and say fill that with uh, black using the paint bucket tool and then come in and erase in some details to give it some additional texture. And I think uh, that makes it look a little more interesting. Same thing, especially with something like this torch, you could come back in over top and erase out different areas and it's going to give it uh, more of a texture, more of a uh, more character than just a straight line. So really, this is my process on almost everything I do to some degree. Just work a rough sketch and then come back and just work to refine it until you're done. So I feel like let's go ahead and finish these stairs out here. But I feel like we've got enough drawn in that we can drop out that bottom sketch later. Like that. And then what I'll do is come back with the paint bucket tool and drop in 
these large flat colors. I think we lost some of the bricks back here, but that's okay because that actually gives me a chance to show you. I could just back it out, but you know what? I did all that on the bottom layer, which is not good. Luckily, Control Z is my friend here. Okay, make a new layer underneath there. We'll do this again. You can see how quick you can make changes uh, digitally, which is why I definitely prefer working this way. Okay, so now what I would do, merge those two layers down and then come back and erase out some details uh, to give the suggestion of the background that's there. And maybe a little bit of a trace of um, the torch. Maybe there's a couple of sparks from the fire. And this, this is um, kind of a cool process because it gives you a chance to sort of meld the character to the background of what you're working on. So rather than looking like a, a cartoon character on a, um, like a background on an animation or something where you can see that they're clearly different art styles, uh, this makes it more, um, just blends it better together. You can add some texture to the bricks, just erasing out different elements like we were talking about. Not too much because you don't want to draw the eye over here too much because that's not the reason we're doing the drawing. Okay, I think we're far enough along that we can add some color in. So for the eyes, I think I'm going to go with the glowing look of, so like a yellow, and then the mummy skin, probably kind of a dark blue. I feel like we need some more bandages on his hand over here, so let's add some in there. And you can just create another layer on top of that and use your paint bucket tool over here on the left. Select your bandage color and come back in and work over top of what you already had and fill that in. So what I'm doing, just, just going through and selecting any area that is a bandage and filling that with the uh, base flat color. Make sure he's got plenty of uh, bandages to keep him decent. Gets cold out in the desert. Okay, and the cool thing about the paint bucket tool is you can it can recognize not only um, close off lines, but what you can do is you can click and it'll fill in this one color that it's recognizing that there's the gray color in the background, and then if you just drag it, it will fill in the rest of that same exact color, and it will skip something else. So I can go over top of the bandages or the eyes, and it's not going to fill that in. It's a real, it's a good time saver, um, which again is why I prefer to work digitally because if you're trying to make a living as an artist, uh, time is your enemy and your friend. So you need a lot of it. Um, or you just need to work really fast. So I'm trying to keep all the bandages on one layer. I think we've successfully done here. Reason being, I'm going to grab a texture real quick. Uh, 
And I'm going to show you one of my favorite tricks. I'm going to drop in this texture over top of the bandage layer. Make sure it covers all the bandages that should get it. Okay, now on uh, the layer below, the, the layer that's got the bandage filled color, hit control and click it, and that's going to select all of your bandages. And then you can come back up here to the layer above it, go to select, invert selected area. So it's going to select everything except the bandages, and then hit delete, and it's going to drop it all out. And so now you're left with just the texture where the bandages were at. And so now you've got some cool looking. Uh, you know, mummy wraps. Really, I'm calling them bandages, but you know, they're whatever you want to call them. And I'm just going to make sure I get the rest of him filled in. His teeth are going to be a little lighter in color. And let's come back through and get some of this background filled in. I want to do this in a couple of layers because this is so far in the foreground. I'll make a little separate layer for it. And then the other background elements will have a, its own layer. The torch, I'm going to just fill it with a dark red, which I'll show you why here in a second. And then um, I've already pre-dropped this in here, but I have an overlay layer, um, kind of a set to gold color. And then I have a texture layer over top of that. And so I'm going to go back to my inked layer, click the lock button on there, and then select something that's not uh, pure black because once you do that, as you can see here, it brings all that texture through. Darken it up some. Okay, so now we've got a pretty interesting looking illustration and it's not quite so flat and we haven't even started shading yet. So off to a good start. Actually, I kind of like that better. I was just clicking that layer off, but I think that looks better than what we had. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flatten a few layers. And on this, uh, the brick in the foreground here, I'm going to select the airbrush tool, set on spray and multiply and a darker color. And just kind of paint over top of that. And it's going to create these little speckles. It's going to add some texture. So I always like to look for different ways to add textures to illustration, whether that be using um, photos or creating the texture yourself with different brushes. I feel like this layer just needs to be darker in general. That's better. Okay. And let's add a little bit of texture on the stairs as well. I like to come in with a darker color and multiply on this setting. And then I also like to come in with a lighter color on screen, which is going to make lighter colored dots. And so you got a, a couple of different levels of uh, color variation going on there. Now I'm going to create a layer above the staircase and set it to multiply. And I'm going to come back with the pen tool. Actually, let's use the oil paint tool. And I'm just going to add some shadows, painting those in. I'm not worried about being too um, precise here because we're just creating a basic uh, shadow scheme and so let's go ahead and merge that down and then you can come back and work in 
the lighting environment. So I like to come back with the airbrush set on hard and glow dodge and then select a lighter color and add some highlights here on the edges of any kind of like raised surface. And so this is going to be the lighting from the torch that's causing this. And then I'll do the same thing um, on the wall as well. So we create a layer on top set to multiply uh, about 50% opacity and use the oil paint tool with a darker color. Come back in and add some shadow. You never really know how it's uh, going to look shadow wise or, you know, with these overlay layers on, it's kind of a question mark. So you might need to adjust the opacity. So I'm kind of cranking it up over here. And then I'm going to merge those down and come back with the airbrush tool again on hard glow dodge, select a lighter color, and then come in and just kind of hit the outside where the torch would be reflecting light. And that should do that. Okay, so uh, using the same process, we're going to do the same thing with the mummy. Uh, create a new layer on multiply. We'll try 61 to start and go back to our oil paint brush. And I can already tell the color is not dark enough, so I'm going to add, pick a darker color. And then just work to start adding shadows in, just kind of uh, basic shapes of the shadows. And so we know the light source is right here from the torch, so the most extreme shadows are going to be on the right side. And the most uh, extreme highlights are going to be coming from the torch direction. And oftentimes the darker the color you use for a base color, the richer the glow dodge will work when you come back and add the highlight. That's why I have the torch at a darker color right now. Um, you'll see when we come back with the glow dodge what that will do. Okay, so I feel like we have a pretty good start here. I'm going to take the opacity up a little bit to make it a little spookier and merge those layers together. Um, and now we can come back and start adding some highlights on this layer. So grab your hard airbrush tool with the lighter color selected. And I can show you like on this torch what I was talking about. So we've got a pretty dark color. When you come back and you hit that with the glow dodge, it really gives it that kind of rich, fiery, vibrant look. So we'll just kind of add in some lines to suggest the fire. And then come along and hit some of these edges with the airbrush tool. His eyes are going to be kind of glowing too, so it's a good time to use the glow dodge there. And it's important to think about during this stage just the um, what areas would be reflecting the light and catching the light, and that's going to give it the shape and depth.
Okay, and then um, there's some areas I'm not really happy with the way the lighting on the edge of this is looking yet. So you can go back and just select the color you want it to look more like, and set it to normal, and then just start to kind of play around with that and, until you get the color you want. So I feel like this orange color is kind of getting the job done for the reflective light on that torch. And sometimes it takes coming in and putting that down and then coming back with the glow dodge tool again on top of that. But really, you could spend as long as you wanted um, detailing this out. Uh, for the sake of YouTube and doing these videos, I try to keep it um, decently quick just to give you an idea of what to do and enough tools for you to run with it. So if you remember nothing else uh, from today other than if you're really new to working digitally, uh, if you set a layer to multiply, that's going to make it darker and screen is going to make it lighter. And if you remember that, then you'll remember that the same rules apply for when you're shading something. If you have that tool set to multiply, it's going to make it darker based on what color you have. And if you have it set to screen, it's going to make it lighter. Um, those are kind of old Photoshop terms that I learned back in high school before um, I didn't know what any of that meant. Now they have, they call things a little differently, like the glow dodge setting. You know it's going to glow. So that one's a little more literal and easy to remember. So remember, multiply, darker, screen, lighter. And I think we've got a pretty good mummy situation going here. So I'm going to go ahead and merge these down. And at this point, if you want to merge your line art and your colors together, you can come in and sort of, again, work to bring in the environment and the character together. Um, so kind of like a good painting at the end, you might come back over top of it and brush one color on to sort of make it seem like they, they go together. So if you have like a, a sky scene and there's, um, a sunset, you might come back at the end and hit it with some of those sunset colors all around. So what I'm going to do is kind of come back here at the end and with a darker kind of red or orange that fits this um, illustration have it set on multiply and you kind of just go over some areas together and you can see that it kind of just makes the character in the um, in the background kind of come together in a way that it's like they're on the same plane and not just plopped on there. And this would be a good time to come back and really add some extra flair to this torch. So the glow dodge is a good one to use, and I would start with the soft and then come back with the hard and. You can see I'm just adding these few little flakes of fire. And maybe even with the eyes, let's add some kind of resonating lighting effects there. And as I said, you could keep going on this for, for hours and hours and add whatever you wanted to but for the sake of this video and teaching you hopefully a few tricks I think we're gonna call it a day which means I need to sign my 
name very poorly there. And uh, that's it. So I appreciate you guys joining me. And um, if you have any questions or uh, comments or um, suggestions, just let us know in the comments down below. And otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you back in Dustin's Crypt next time. Bye.